All right. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about our little journey of um, doing FFI in Rust and how we, we this thingy called Diplomat that we built to make FFI a bit nicer and easier. Um, I work at Google um, on a Unicode project. So this talk is not a Google talk. It's a Unicode slash my own thoughts talk. So don't pin me down on anything. Um, yeah, about me, so I'm working uh, on ICU4X, which is an internationalization library, um, hence the Unicode affiliation. Uh, I've been working on Rust since 2021, so getting kind of proficient by now. Um, and yeah, I think Rust is a great language compared to all the other ones. Um, and FFI, yeah, you have to do all the other ones as well. <laughs> um, so what's the motivation behind this? Um, so CABI is everywhere, right? Um, you can just do FFI by writing a C method, but it's, yeah, not great. Um, because A, uh, you kind of need to know C, and not everyone on our team, like we have internationalization experts, we don't necessarily have like C experts. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a bit limiting, right? So you don't have methods or errors or strings as you kind of have to, it's very low level, right? Um, you have to do manual memory management. And um, on the other side, it's also horrible, right? If you call the C ABI from C++, it's not great. Um, from JavaScript through Wasm, it's very, very assembly. Um, and yeah, um, C Bindgen and Wasm Bindgen, for example, exist, um, but they only target a single language at a time. And in our project, we want to target all the languages, um, which is why we built Diplomat. Um, so Diplomat is um, made out of three parts. Um, first, we have a proc macro to write all the boilerplate in Rust. So this is all your X and C stuff. Um, then we have a prelude um, to have like cross language nice types. So this includes things like uh, strings, er like errors, uh, yeah, what else? Uh, allocations, uh, logging, things like this. Um, and then the bindings generators, uh, basically you go from your Rust code, so your annotated Rust code to nice uh, C++, JavaScript, Dart, you name it, code. Um, so let's look at some examples. Um, no, let's explain what the proc macro is first. Um, yeah, so I already said this basically. Um, you write a bit of Rust code um, in a subset of Rust. So you can't, you can't do generics or things like this because those really don't exist on, on, on the ABI. Um, but it's better than just the extra C stuff, right? You can, you can write a method, for example. Uh, and then the proc macro takes this and translates it into, you know, raw functions. Um, and yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, if you have an enum or a struct, it's very simple, right? Uh, you just slap a reference C on it. Um, yeah, why do we need diplomat? Um, because you can also do things which we call opaques, um, which you can only pass by reference, right? Uh, so create formatter can be like a super complex Rust type. Um, and as long as you always pass it in a box or in a reference, it can pass a um, the, the FFI boundary. Um, so you can do something like define a formatter um, which wraps a more complex formatter uh, and then you can put methods on it, right? You can, you can put a constructor, you can put a format method which does your juicy logic. Um, and what Diplomat's going to do is basically it defines the extra C boilerplate, right? It, it, for each method it makes a function and then it redirects um, into your implementation. Uh, and it sets up a destructor as well because boxes need to be dropped. Um, yeah, so then the second part is the prelude. Um, it, it contains things like diplomat result because the Rust result type actually has the Rust ABI, so which is unstable famously, uh, so you can't just pass it to C. Uh, instead, diplomat result is a tagged C union with a little Boolean, like okay or not. Um, then we have diplomat writable, which kind of abstracts over strings. Uh, in Rust, it implements format writes, so you can just use the write macros to write into it. 
um, and then it will write in the right in the correct shape of your target language, right? So um, in in C plus plus, it'll generate like a std string string or whatever it's called. I don't really do C plus uh, plus. In other languages, it might actually produce UTF sixteen because other languages use UTF sixteen internally, um, and this can all happen on this like while you produce the string so that you don't have to convert it later. Um, and then, yeah, diplomat stir, diplomat stir 16, and diplomat char um, are kind of required because the stir and char types in Rust have this invariant that they need to be valid UTF-8 or valid, uh, a valid Unicode code point. If you pass a random uh, sequence of bytes into Rust and Rust interprets that as a stir, that's UB, so you don't want this. Um, which is why basically these these are aliases for slice of U8, slice of U16, and uh, U32. Um, but it tells diplomat that you know this slice of U16 is actually a UTF16 string. So then in the target language we can make it nice and use string types. Um, so what does this look like? This is the example from before, but with a bit more bit more arguments. Um, so now I added um, a diplomat string argument, which you know we have to validate that this is, UT that this is UTF-8 because in other languages you know it's a free for all. Um, we have a result type now, which we can just return and diplomat will translate into something nice. Uh, well, into something that works on the ABI and into something nice in the other language, uh, and then we have this diplomat writable, which is kind of an uh, in-out variable, we just write, we write to it, right? Um, and then on the ABI, it actually looks a bit different because like this is a, this is a slice, so we have to have a data and a length parameter. Um, we can't pass results on the ABI, so we translate it into diplomat result, which is the ABI safe type. Um, and then there's a more dot, dot, dot here because you have to convert from data and LAN back to a Rust slice, which you know can also fail. If it's a null pointer, then you have to chuck in an empty slice because you can't create Rust slices from null pointers. Um, yeah, and then the last part is basically uh, exists for each language separately um, and just generates the language. So in C++, we generate classes, we use std span, std stir, uh, result, all this. Um, in JavaScript, uh, it's a bit messier, but we also well we also support TypeScript uh, with classes and enums, aka strings, <laughs> um, and uh, we hook up the garbage collection, which I'll get to later as well. Uh, Dart is the same, well similar to JavaScript, it's also garbage collected, bit nicer type system. Um, yeah, and we also generate docs. So um, this is what that looks like. Again, we have our uh, Rust code, and from there we generate C++ code. Um, you notice here um, my diplomat str became a std string view, um, which of course can contain invalid UTF-8 in C, no, in C++, um, but that's fine, right, because we validate it on the Rust side. Um, and then, yeah, so we also create this diplomat writable, which, um, which uh, becomes uh, a std stir after uh, we've written to it. Um, yeah, and then this is what it, yeah, it's probably a bit small, but like we use this for ICU4x to expose our whole API in multiple languages. So this is the C++ API for our collator, so um, sorting strings. Uh, you see here we have multiple methods, um, so comparing value to F8, uh, potentially invalid UTF-8 and UTF-16. Note that compare and compare valid UTF-8 take the same type in C++ because there is no type that guarantees valid UTF-8. So that will have a comment saying, you know, it is, on B, uh, it is UB to give me invalid UTF-8. Um, then, yeah, this is TypeScript, very similar. Uh, this is Dart. Uh, in Dart, we actually only expose, like we filter out some of the compare methods because what we need to do in garbage collected languages, unfortunately, is anything we, we want to pass into Rust, we kind of have to reallocate 
in Rust um, because you can't you can't borrow from the garbage collected memories memory part because that you know changes all the time. Uh, also, we have to re-encode because Dart is UTF-16 anyway. Um, but then here, uh, the cool thing is that because this happens internally in code that diplomat generates, we know that this is like we know this is about UTF-8, so we can use the faster Rust code path here. Um, yeah, and then no Rust talk would be complete without talking about lifetimes. Um, so obviously, lifetimes are not a C ABI feature, so we can't really enforce anything. Um, Diplomat does a full lifetime analysis, though. So when it parses your code, uh, it looks up all the lifetimes, and it tracks which arguments and return types uh, come with which lifetimes. Um, and then it replicates them in a target language, which in C++ and C just means, you know, it adds a comment saying, this has to live as long as this. Um, however, in uh, JavaScript and Dart, we can do something a bit more clever. Um, we basically abuse the garbage collector. to add For every lifetime, we add like a back edge to our objects. So like the garbage collector keeps them alive as long, like according to the lifetimes. Uh, and this is probably the most, the trickiest part to implement uh, in Diplomat. Um, and we're still kind of working on that um, for more and more uh, complex scenarios. Oh yeah, that was it. Um, future, so yeah, we're still actively developing Diplomat at the moment. Um, we're trying to, so we, d we did a lot of internal improvements. We have an, like an intermediate representation which handles a lot of the lifetime stuff. Um, so we're trying to now migrate our backends to that. So C++ um, will benefit from improved lifetime analysis. Uh, we might actually output lifetime hints for C++ because Clang, for example, has an extension where you can tell it, you know, this output and this input are kind of related. It's very crude, but like, it's something. Um, JavaScript as well. Uh, and yeah, we're also still working on more features. So uh, co programming languages are complex. They all have different features. Like Rust doesn't even have constructors, which are a very key concept in many languages. Uh, so at the moment, we don't have constructors. Like everything just becomes a static method in like C++ or in, in Dart. Um, don't even know how it works in JavaScript. Um, but yeah, constructors would be nice to have. Um, and then things like, you know, uh, comparing two values. Um, what's missing here as well is default values. Um, if, you, if you have a struct, um, how do you create the struct in the other language? Like what is, in C, it, you can just create the struct, but then you get just like whatever is in memory there, which is not really great. Um, and iterators are also very rusty, um, but tricky to do over FFI because you need callbacks and all that. Um, yes, and own values. So at the moment, we do a lot of borrowing across the FFI layer, which is great because then you don't have to allocate anything. However, in languages like Dart and JavaScript, you need to allocate anyway. So then you don't necessarily want to allocate and then borrow it in Dart and then like clone it in Dart again. Um, but this is tricky because to pass a value that is owned by Rust over the ABI or over the FFI boundary, the other language needs to have used the Rust allocator to allocate this value. Um, so you can't just pass anything into Rust um, because, again, that would be UB. There's a lot of UB around FFI. Um, yeah, so what's, what's our conclusion? Um, or what's my conclusion? Uh, so with Diplomat, we can define our a uh, FFI surface separately from our code, which is super convenient. So we have like very nice idiomatic Rust library. And then we have uh, a wrapper crate that uses like the safe subset uh, and does the FFI. Uh, it also decouples writing the FFI from our business logic, internationalization, which is great. We have some experts on the team who spend a lot of time with this FFI stuff. But then we also have people who have no idea how any of this works, and they can still write 
uh, well, write a C++ library by just writing the Rust library. Um, and yeah, we can add languages one by one. Uh, I recently added Dart um, because we want to expose our library in Dart. And uh, yeah, it's not that much work once the whole core thing is there. All right, that was it already. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>